Hello, warm welcome. Welcome to this webinar on effective assessment centres and introducing the Assessor Skills course. My name is Max, Max Choi from Quest Partnership. I'm a business psychologist and I guess for many years I've been working in areas such as assessment centres, psychometrics, assessment and leadership development. So just to give you an overview of this webinar, I'll first uh, take you through some interesting research findings that will hopefully help you to improve your assessment centres. I will then introduce you to the Assessor and Observer Skills Training course, give you an overview of the course. Also mention the distance learning approach and why I train with Quest Partnership. The webinar should last approximately 30 minutes and then there'll be a question and answer session at the end. Okay, and um, if you have any particular uh, questions, you can type that. Um, on on the screen. Right, so first thing to get started is um, I'd just like to ask you a question. So on a scale of 1 to 10, just rate yourself how you see yourself in terms of observer skills, okay? How observant are you? So 1, you miss most things and you're very poor and 10, you're brilliant and you're not going to miss anything at all. So give yourself a rating, just jot that down on a piece of paper. Now, what I'd like you to do um, is to just, uh, on your computer, um, so type in Google or YouTube, color changing card trick. Now, I'd like you to watch a video. Choose um, the video that lasts exactly two minutes and 43 seconds, okay? So um, you can just pause this webinar and come back and join me in due course in, I guess, three minutes time. Okay, so watch the video, have fun. Okay, so you saw the color changing card trick video. Hopefully you found it um, quite entertaining. Now the key question is, do you spot everything or like most people, did you miss a few changes that happened right in the front of your very eyes? Yes, most people have missed quite a few things. So you're just normal. Um, so on that basis, you probably don't need to adjust your rating because it's all relative, isn't it really? Uh, compared to other people, um, although you might have rated yourself quite high, um, uh, compared to other people, you're, you're probably quite normal. Um, but let's compare the, that with your our best friend, the dog. Then perhaps we're pretty poor, really, in terms of um, our, using our senses effectively and uh, being observant. Um, here's a picture of the beagle, and um, police use them as um, d dogs to to trace drugs, okay? Because they can really detect minute traces of drugs and also explosives. So, so whether you're a drug trafficker or you're a terrorist, um, the dogs are right on your case. Uh, also from research, we have um, one of our imminent um, psychologists, George A. Miller, uh, back in 1956. He did some very um, clever research and uh, came up with magic number seven, plus or minus two. Yes, and um, yeah, the, the magic number seven um, is quite an interesting number in itself. You know, if you look around the world, um, it comes out quite a lot. Um, you know, uh, for example, the seven deadly sins, seven wonders of the world. And it's funny, isn't it, why we have seven days of the week? Why not 10 days in a week? Um, nice, round, useful number, you think? No, because um, somebody knew that we can't deal with 10 things. So seven days in a week. Um, so typically, um, seven plus or minus two, that means that we can cope with about five to nine things. Okay, and uh, our memory capacity and our coping capacity limits our ability to cope with more things. If only assessors know that, uh, then assessment centres might be a bit more effective because we typically find that the assessors aren't making um, the, the, the due diligence, uh, note taking and um, making sure they're getting things down and they truly understand the assessment and getting quality notes and, and, and assessments done. Okay, so hence uh, we're really focusing on perhaps the limitations of humans and assessors and perhaps we do overrate our capacity. So let's just focus our minds on assessment centre, assessment centre approach, bearing that in mind. Um, the assessment centre approach is um, 
using quite a lot of, um, I guess, um, resources and um, and the word multiple springs to mind because we have multiple exercises involved in assessment centres, also throw in some tests, etc. Uh, we like to have lots of uh, competencies measured during an assessment centre. We also like to involve quite a few assessors, so multiple assessors. Now, we get that right, and it's a big if, if we get all that right, then perhaps um, the potential benefits are, are there and we can get better assessment. Um, but the downside is that very often um, we don't get this right. Um, so therefore, there can be a potential problem. Let's just um, look at what we actually do find from the research data. So um, clever people can do things called meta-analysis, and here's a, a meta-analysis um, output. Um, so recent meta-analysis output and we find that um, assessment centres don't come up tops really, they're not at the very top of this um, uh, research finding. What we've got at the top are work sample tests. Um, so a work sample test would be something like a, a typing test would be a very simple example and, and a good one I guess. So in other words if your role in a job requires um, very good typing skills, then you give them a short but clearly defined test of that skill. So uh, give them a typing test and you measure the, that particular skill very well and it doesn't take a lot of time and it, and it clearly works and hence it comes out pretty high compared to everything else. At the bottom you've got things like graphology, in other words handwriting analysis. Um, and then you've got quite a few things in the middle. Interestingly, structured interviews, so, so a well Design structured interview can work quite well. It, it, um, it beats our assessment centres typically. Okay, um, so what's going on there? Because obviously assessment centres requires a lot of resources and a lot of effort, and um, and, and it can be quite costly. Um, so, what can we do to perhaps um, improve the situation? And uh, we, we've we've noticed that over the last couple of decades, I think um, the assessment centres has be uh, faring worse. Um, so we need to understand what's going on. I try to personally understand what's going on um, quite a few years back because I, obviously dealing with assessment centres over a long time frame, um, I clearly knew there was an issue here. So, um, you know, so why are these resource hungry assessment centres not working that well? So I initiated and um, put together a team of um, occupational psychologists, uh, um, all of them having very, very good skills and knowledge in assessment centres and we were working on the uh, assessment centre standard. Uh, this was actually launched last year, um, early last year in 2015 by the British Psychological Society. It is the first set of standards to support people designing and running assessment centres and uh, it provides recommendations that, that um, uh, takes into account a lot of research findings and, and, and the latest research findings in assessment centres and, and technology of assessment centres and therefore it's clearly evidence-based so on that on on that approach um, you can see that if people can follow these standards and, and help them improve their assessment centres you will actually clearly improve um, the output and, and get better assessment centres now our course aligns to the assessment centre standards and um, the assessment standards are completely free and available to you um, either from the BPS website or from our own website, the Quest Partnership website. And just to give you some insights um, in terms of using the research and evidence-based approach um, in terms of um, how you can improve your own assessment centres, um, i just got a few things to, to convey to you. Um, I like to, I guess, um, put things into themes. So my first theme is that overdoing it. Um, and here you've got these muscle men, okay. Um, and uh, my daughter, who's a personal trainer, my personal trainer, by the way, <laughs> uh, keeping me fit. Um, but um, she tells me that these um, these uh, super muscle men aren't actually fit at all, really, and, and they're not healthy. Um, because what they're doing, they are overdoing it. They're they're exercising the wrong way. Um, so they're exercising using very, very extremely heavy weights, um, just doing the same movement over and over again, uh, pumping that iron, as it's called. Okay, uh, building a particular muscle, 
uh, and that's not the way to exercise. It's very un unhealthy and it's not natural. Um, so that's um, a learning point for us that perhaps some of the things we do in terms of assessment center approach is not the right way and we might be overdoing it. Um, oh yeah, I've got my clever symbol at the bottom there. Um, and can you guess what that means? Well, that means less is more. Okay, can you see that? Less is more. So less is more. So areas we might need to try, we might try too hard on. Uh, so the first thing is to, um, to, to appreciate that often um, organizations running assessment centers have too many competencies. They're trying to measure too many competencies. Okay. So therefore the recommendation is actually to try to reduce uh, the number of competencies and, and to check that they don't overlap with each other. Um, another issue is um, overworked assessors, okay, who are trying to do everything. Again, this is not a recommended approach. Um, an assessment center is just a large project um, or, um, you know, so like any large project or business, you know, we can focus on. Good example would be um, when you go into a restaurant, okay. Um, do you notice when you go into a restaurant, um, you don't get the same member of staff uh, who uh, sees you in, invites you in, sits you down, takes your order, then goes and cook your food, makes your drink um, and so on and, pay, and gets your bill paid, okay. Uh, you know, st staff in restaurants have assigned roles, okay. So you go into, into the kitchen, there's um, different um, kitchen staff, different chefs, um, different um, support kitchen staff. Um, uh, and quite interestingly, here's something, uh, an insight for you. If you go to a large Chinese restaurant, okay, you have different waiters. Um, some waiters will look after the, the Chinese clientele who, who appreciate and want um, uh, authentic Chinese cuisine. Um, other waiters will focus on Westerners and in English people who perhaps um, don't like the taste of authentic Chinese cuisine. Um, so you get the idea of um, assessors being specialists in specialist roles, um, being competent to do their jobs effectively. <clears throat> we also find that ex some exercises are over-engineered, so we try too hard. Uh, a good example is um, some case study exercises, written exercises. Too much information, too, 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 too challenging, too difficult, not given enough time, and candidates just don't, do not have the opportunity to perform and, and to demonstrate their competence. Okay, and similarly we have um, issues with um, interactive exercises whereby we're trying to be too clever. And just focusing back on the top of the um, that, that um, validation, um, uh, it was it was um, the work work based um, test which came out top. So perhaps what we need to do, just like um, the top the top um, example of the, the typing test, very simple, um, clearly define what we're measuring. We need to design exercises which are much shorter, focuses on just one or two areas to measure of behaviours and competencies and, and run with that. Um, so a much more shorter, neater and effective exercise um, might meet our needs better. <coughs> Also exercises can measure too many competencies. So again, um, when that happens in practice, um, good example is a, uh, an exercise with um, trying to measure about 10 competencies. It just becomes an impossible task for the assessor. So what does the assessor do? They just ra uh, rate the overall exercise. Did this candidate do well or not well on exercise? And it's no wonder that the 10 competence ratings are pretty similar. Um, yeah, the next one's sort of very interesting and um, caused quite a lot of um, discussion. Um, probably because um, a lot of people misunderstood what we're recommending. They thought they were recommending do not run wash-ups, which isn't uh, what we're, we're saying. What we're saying is that um, make sure that your assessment centre ratings from, the, from, from, from your assessment centre are not um, changed. OK, um, so through your wash up discussion, you should not be changing your assessor's ratings, really. Um, so we need to make sure the assessors are competent and do a good job and can rate effectively. And then we leave those ratings alone. Um, what tends to happen is that we have long drawn out wash ups and then these assessment centre ratings get changed, which is really bad. And that's been proven by research. OK. Um, 
the research findings definitely clearly prove that um, we're just contaminating the, the data. Um, and that's good news, really. Uh, I know that lots of organizations run wash ups, which goes on for ages and ages. So you're just um, spending quite a lot of unproductive time. So um, it'd be good news for assessors, really. Uh, they can go home earlier. OK, so another thing to, to, to consider is uh, using appropriate tests to provide objective measures uh, because they're very useful and they measure well and they can be highly useful. And the good news is that we haven't got humans contaminating or introducing error. Um, so do bear that in mind. Another theme I like to explore is um, to focus on what really matters and whereby we might not give sufficient um, sufficient focus, really. So um, there's a few things that spring to mind. One is, is um, effective communications. Um, I guess um, particularly for the people attending the centre. OK, so often, especially if they're internal, uh, you've got staff who have been invited onto um, a development centre or assessment centre, but they don't really know what it's about. Is it is it an assessment centre? They've been, they've been assessed and, and there might be some things at stake. Um, um, so they don't really know. Or is it more a, a development programme and it's a safe environment? Um, so we just need to explicitly tell them what it is and, and how it's going to support them. Um, obviously, we need effective assessors, so focusing on that, and um, we're doing that, obviously, uh, in, this, in this webinar. Uh, quality feedback and support, um, that's another useful thing to focus on um, in terms of um, for, the, for the candidate or delegate attending. Also, um, that might also be useful to relate it to evaluation and getting um, useful feedback about how the centre's working. Uh, and uh, possible um, you know, evaluation and validation, I guess. And then I've got an interesting analogy. OK, so let's have a look at that. Here's my dream car, I guess, um, the McLaren MP4. Uh, so um, I've got a few questions for you. First question is, um, how fast can this go? Not to 60. How many seconds do you think? OK, so um, have a think about that. OK, got your answer. Right. Um, the answer is 2.8 seconds. That's pretty fast. OK. Now, um, this is um, a lovely car and a well engineered car can really perform. So the second question is, um, what's the most vital part of this car? OK, so think about that and jot down your answer. OK, so typically we get answers like uh, the engine. Uh, OK. Um, and we might get other answers like the, uh, the, the streamlining of the, the car to make it go fast, etc. Um, so they're not bad answers, but they're not the answers I'm really looking for. The answer I'm looking for is the tyres. You might be thinking, why the tyres? OK, so look at the car and it sits on the road. So it's the, only the tyres which touches the road. So the way to understand it is that this car might be well engineered, but all its performance has to be transformed from the, the brilliant car to the tyres to performing on the road. OK, so the tyres are quite key. So it's no wonder that um, if you watch Formula One, OK, have you noticed that um, the drivers are willing to sacrifice a few seconds to get into the pit stop to change the tyres? OK, and they don't, they're not given time to change the tyres. If they go into the pit stop, it's still part of the race time. OK, and obviously they've got a the team who can change these tyres extremely quickly in a few seconds. Literally, I think the record is something like in two seconds that they change the tyres. Amazing, isn't it? Two seconds. But that's what happens. Um, yeah, so a bit of a diversion for assessment centres, but let's focus on assessment centres. So this car is now your assessment centre. So the follow up question is. What's the equivalent to tyres for your assessment centre? 
Okay, think about that. So what's the, an, the analogous equivalent to tyres when this car is now your assessment centre? So, so your assessment centre might be well engineered, just like the car, but there's something within assessment centre which is quite vital. Uh, the answer is that the tyres equates to ratings, okay? Uh, why is that? Because again, um, you might have a brilliant assessment centre, so well-designed exercises, okay? Um, Timetabling working well and so on, assessors well-trained. But the reality is that um, if the ratings don't really work, then you've got a problem still, okay? So, so we want to consider bars. Um, no, not that psychologists like hanging around in bars, but bars as, as in behaviourally anchored rating scales. So, so ratings worked up as behaviourally anchored rating scales. So we, we know, um, obviously we need to get, to get things to numbers, but there are behaviourally dis anchored descriptions um, underpinning our numbers. The other key um, challenge we have is that the, the, the rating scale used um, for most many assessment centres is something like one to four or, or, or close to that. So a one to four scale, which I would argue is very, very blunt and not differentiating. Why I say that is because uh, if you've got a one to four scale, okay, uh, assessors will be thinking, one, um, that's too harsh. It can't be that bad. Besides, they've been shortlisted to attend this assessment centre. Okay, so, so they avoid the one. Four, what does four mean to them? Oh, walks on water. Well, only I can walk on water, so um, they can't be as good as me. Um, so, so what practically happens is that we're left with a scale which is really two and three being, being used, uh, which I would say is just completely blunt uh, or as good as ball tyres, really. So um, what can we do to remedy that? Um, the suggestion is to introduce half segments if you've got a rating scale similar or, or exactly one to four, uh, and that would achieve greater differentiation and, and, and um, get the scale more useful. And obviously to devise your rating system, ensuring that you, you can minimize error. So that's the recommendation there. Okay, so, um, so um, we devised this um, assessor skills course um, uh, because the way we saw it is that um, there are um, other courses out there, obviously, but um, we feel that um, the standards have just been launched and, and, and it really guides us to make sure we get the, the right things covered and um, we, we, we work up a good course to ensure that um, we can ensure that we have um, really good quality assessors really. And as I mentioned earlier, I think there is um, evidence that the quality of assessors is slipping. It might be because uh, more, more and more organisations are starting to use assessment centres, uh, but uh, the reality is that uh, some, some of them do not really know what they're doing or how to, how to effectively run assessment centres well. So this course will help um, achieve the high standards required and ensure that we get um, comprehensive coverage of all the important parts. Uh, because quality training does um, link to competent assessors, really. Um, so let's uh, look at the benefits of um, of this um, being able to achieve quality assessors. Obviously, um, we'll get um, improvement on the quality of the um, candidates, um, so hiring better quality candidates. Uh, accuracy of assessment centres will improve. Um, because um, on the training we also um, provide um, skills in uh, feedback, then quality of feedback, development feedback and um, coaching as well, okay, so useful skills. And for, all, for the organisation to improve the, uh, the organisational performance overall. For the individuals um, being trained as an assessor, um, I think their, their skills can be used in a, in a wider context, really, in terms of their, their work. So that'd be very useful for them in terms of their ongoing development uh, and supporting their, 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 their roles in, in their organisations. 
a bit more on the assessor skills course okay so um, what it is um, so it cover um, what makes an effective assessment center and um, the skills and roles of an effective assessor observer how to objectively assess and as mentioned earlier it's aligned with the British Psychological Society's um, assessment center standards um, who is it um, good for so HR people, recruitment people, uh, people who need to be assessors, observers on assessment centres or development centres, and I, and I guess any anybody involved um, in assessment centres or assessing people. Okay, so a bit more on the modules. It's, there's two key modules. Uh, the first module is um, loosely termed introduction to assessment centres, but obviously it goes well beyond just an introduction to, to assessment centres. Um, so it cover things like um, what assessment centres are, uh, the, the background and um, and how um, assessment centres have changed over the years. Um, <coughs> uh, people resources for assessment centres, um, covering the role of the assessors. Okay, uh, we also cover other things like job analysis. Um, then we look at um, exercises, assessments and exercises, um, tests and questionnaires. Into module two, this is a highly pragmatic um, module. So you will um, take people through the skills of um, being an assessor. Uh, so, so following the OSEF model and others observe, record, classify, evaluate and feedback. Uh, they'll be introduced to assessment centre exercises and using them uh, uh, to, to, to practice these skills. Sorry, let's just move that too much. Yep, practice these skills. And um, th there's other things that this module covers as well. So things like role playing, equality, uh, the wash up process. OK, so 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 lots of um, areas covered there. Um, now, the course is a distance learning course. Now we do run face-to-face -face training uh, we do actually run face-to-face -face, um, assessor training courses but um, what we're finding is that clients are expecting that um, such courses um, ought to be half a day or at most um, one day and this is proving most difficult. Um, I know that other providers um, offer this um, but we feel that um, you can't actually deliver a decent course um, within a day um, to cover all the, all the things you need to cover and get to, the delegates to practice all the things they need to practice and to really learn and retain that learning effectively to be to be a competent assessor. Um, so therefore, we've um, devised this distance learning approach. Um, the distance learning approach gives um, great flexibility to, to, the, to the learner really. So it's um, self-paced, they can do do things um, when they like, where they like, okay. Uh, we can make it very engaging with blended uh, elements, okay. So for example, um, support videos which are useful, um, like the one you saw earlier, okay. Um, practical sessions, um, course workbook and, and attending webinars. Um, so, so we get a much more better outcome and a much more useful an engaging learning experience for 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 the delegate. Um, they, all, they also assign a, a support tutor, so um, if they feel they are stuck or they have a question or they just want a discussion to explore things, uh, they can contact us um, by phone or or by email, or if they live nearby, even pop in. Okay, so a support tutor, designated support tutor. Uh, so we're, what we're offering is um, um, effectively. Um, you know, um, cost, time, and resource effective, really. Um, also, there's no exams, okay, so, um, but in terms of ensuring high standards, um, there is some um, continuous assessment, but the delegates won't really feel they're being assessed as such because it's all part of um, the learning process. So, so they're just learning on the course, but um, they've been continuously assessed when they, when they complete their workbooks and, and they do their assignments, really. So the course is supportive of engaging practical assignments um, 
and uh, assess the, on that basis. So real practice of assess the skills and using assessment centre exercises. Um, so they'll be doing with practicing obs observation, recording, um, whilst watching the candidates on video, for example. And it'll be practicing um, classifying and evaluating. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, they provided with support and there's opportunity for discussion and feedback uh, throughout their course. So the cost um, for the course is uh, 395 plus VAT, includes all the training materials, um, a, um, assigned personal tutor, support sessions, uh, comprehensive feedback, and um, as mentioned earlier, the webinars and support videos. Okay, um, just an estimate of co likely completion time. Obviously, everybody's different, so these are just very, very rough estimates of how long it might take for people to complete this. Okay, uh, people are working at their own pace, so, so, so these are just estimates. But uh, for module one, maybe around four hours, and module two, um, uh, around seven to eight hours for completion. Okay, and um, the learning outcomes are just um, for module one. So understand assessment centres and what makes an effective assessment centre for module two. Um, so applying the whole of the ORCEF model. Yeah. So um, so that's the assessment assessor skills course. We also got another course, okay, which is the running assessment centres course. Um, so uh, we expect that to people attending this course would have been trained as assessors already and know quite a bit about assessment centres, I guess, to some extent. And this course is um, to help people who might be interested in uh, perhaps um, getting involved or actually leading on running assessment centres. So um, it's to support them to do exactly that, to run assessment centres. So to maximise the potential of your assessment centres. Again, it's based on the latest research and um, evidence-based findings and approaches. Um, so again, um, if you follow this course, um, you will improve your assessment centres and, and they will work. Um, and um, there'll be um, things that help you learn very much about how to manage all the resources and, and, and manage the um, aspects and, and issues and challenges of ass assessment centres. So things like people, communications, uh, assessment centre exercise materials, um, how, how to best timetable, equality issues, training, and so on, really. Uh, other things it will help you with, um, one of the key things is um, making sure your assessment criteria actually works. Um, uh, very often, um, organisations um, feel they have to use their organisational competencies, um, uh, which is which is which is fine to an extent, but you know, um, but to make it highly effective on an assessment centre, then we might need to adapt those somewhat. So we 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 um, impart the skills in terms of how you can do that, um, and then um, yeah, just effective scheduling and uh, resourcing really. Um, so 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 um, tips and pointers on those aspects. So you can get a feel for it. it's very much um, geared up to help you run effective assessment centres. Um, um, apart from taking you through getting uh, through the course, um, see, see the course is also offering you lots of um, useful, extremely useful practical um, resource materials to help you um, design and develop your assessment centre. So things like uh, exercise resources, uh, timetabling templates, um, joint instruction uh, templates and communications. Uh, and so on, and lots, lots more. In the so that's um, the running assessment centres course. Okay, so um, final slide is just about a Quest partnership. Um, why, why um, train with us? I guess. Um, so um, yeah, so I personally have, have over twenty five years of experience involved with assessment centres. Um, so we see ourselves as perhaps um, quite knowledgeable in this area of. Um, assessment centres and uh, people assessment. Um, so I mentioned earlier that um, yeah, got involved in um, initiating and leading on the new BPS, BPS um, assessment centre standards. Um, yeah, so we're professional and um, hopefully you, see, you can see us, us as very friendly and supportive um, and experienced. And uh, as, as mentioned earlier, you'll be assigned a tutor to support you. Also useful to mention that we're not a test publisher, so so we're not, never going to be there to always uh, try to push our 
best um, test or assessment centre exercise. Um, so we're here to provide impartial advice on on tests and assessments um, and the like, really. And uh, we also um, do these webinars, and okay, and um, they're typically free, and um, so useful um, place to come to get lots of um, useful advice and uh, pointers in this area of uh, assessment and development. So thank you very much. And um, yep, so um, if you're interested or have any queries or like to um, have a discussion with us about uh, assess assessment centers or any other related um, matter, do contact us. OK, so here's our details. Uh, OK, so thank you very much and catch you later.